G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. This time, we're going to take a close look at decoys. When I was thinking about decoys, I wanted to figure out how I might best be able to use them on my ships to protect more critical systems. That, after all, is the idea of them. They're supposed to get shot first. How is that actually supposed to work in Space Engineers though? Well, when you've got an automated enemy turret like this one, it will prioritize certain targets above other ones. So decoys will be, should be targeted before cargo, which should be targeted differently to projector blocks, gyroscopes, reactors, cockpits, other guns, etc, etc. Even batteries. So in theory, this gun should have a targeting priority so that these are targeted in a set order. To my mind, I'm not so worried about which of the other blocks are targeted first. I just want to confirm that decoys are actually targeted first. That if I'm going to use them, they'll work in the way that I imagine. If we want to take a look at our general idea of what's going to be targeted first, we can use this approximate testing rig. Now unfortunately this rig does have a slight problem. The blocks that are further off to the sides are a little bit further away from the turret, therefore they may get targeted later due to distance. What we have here is a gun, a cockpit, a reactor, a battery, a gyroscope, a projector, a cargo container, a switched on decoy block and a switched off decoy block. So if we place this and just quickly delete that cockpit, we'll see which the gun is going to target first. And it goes straight for the switched on decoy. Next up, it goes after the gyroscope. Then it looks like it's going after the battery. Seems like the projector blocks next. If it reloads, there we go. Yep, projector blocks next. Then it looks like it's going after the reactor. Cargo next. While this gun's blasting away at these targets, from what I've tested so far, the decoy blocks do not need to be powered to function. This means that if you're in space, you can actually launch them ahead of you and use the Newtonian physics in this game so that they will just carry on forever towards the thing you're trying to attack. In theory, if you had enough time and enough space, you could actually launch a whole cloud of them so that you would never have your own ship targeted by the enemy AI turrets. So we've had a look at the approximate order of priority that the AI turrets have for targeting. And gyroscopes and cockpits, they're pretty high up on the list. And then it comes down to power supply. Now let's take a closer look at whether these decoys really work. What I've got set up here is a testing rig. We'll start with the antenna one. I've chosen blocks based on things that you might actually want to protect from turrets. And just to get an idea of whether there's anything that's a bit janky about how this works, if it doesn't actually work as it's intended. So I believe it is intended that decoys will always be the top of the list. What I've set up here is a central spine of blocks that's 10 blocks long. That will place these two objects at an almost exact same distance, if I line it up correctly with the turret, from the turret. So distance is not a factor. Power is, not, is also not a factor. There is a reactor set deep underground on this rig, as you can see at the bottom there. That means that reactor won't be targeted by this turret, so it won't affect targeting priority, but it will allow the blocks to be powered. Because do we really worry about the unpowered cockpit being targeted? I know I don't. So this should provide us some useful reproducible results. So let's go for the first time. Let's see what this target, what the gun targets first. Is it going to be the decoy or is it going to be the antenna? And I think as we would predict, the decoy. 
So, power blocks. These we really do want to protect. Will a decoy draw fire from them? Got a battery, and decoy gets hit first. You can see that even with light armor, those decoys get obliterated quickly. If you're going to use them on a combat ship, you're going to need to have some fairly decent protection around them. So decoy versus cargo. And again, decoy draws fire. Decoy versus cockpit. This one I'm not so sure the decoy is going to win. I'm pretty sure that cockpits are fairly high up on the priority order. So let's pop it down and see and... Oh, yep, the decoy did get targeted. So what about decoys being switched on or off? We know that it's fairly reliable with the other blocks. What I've set up here is that the decoy on the left is turned off. The decoy on the right is on. Both are connected to a grid that has power. So let's see what happens. This shows that you do need to have the decoy on. The decoy off when we had the rig with all of the items on it, it was actually one of the last things to be targeted. So it will not help you. Why you'd turn a decoy off, I don't know. But I thought it was something that I should test. Let's compare against a gyroscope. And there we go. Targeting the decoy first. Let's try that one again just to make sure. And decoy first. I think we can reliably say that the decoys, if set at the same distance as the other objects, will be targeted first. But what happens if they're not at the same range? What happens if we set them back? So if our design looks best with decoys hanging off the back rather than the front, is that going to put us at a disadvantage? Let's find out. I think the gyroscope is probably our best test rig for this. We'll pop this down. And instead of having the decoy even with the gyroscope, let's set it back five blocks and see if it still gets targeted first. So we've got our powered gyroscope, we've got our decoy set five blocks further back. And let's go have a look. Alright, decoy five blocks further back, and away we go. And it is still targeted first. Okay, how far back do we need to go? Let's try ten blocks. Right now the decoy is almost twice as far away from the turret as the gyroscope. So I'm actually interested to see if that's enough distance that the gyroscope will get targeted first. No, the decoy still draws fire first. Okay. How far do we have to go? Let's double it. We'll keep doubling it until the decoy is either out of range or isn't targeted first. Add another 10 blocks on. Make another decoy on there. Let's give this a go. So, 20 blocks test. And the decoy still draws fire first. This is interesting. I wonder if any distance will actually make a difference or if it calculates it based on the grid. So it identifies the closest grid and then targets whichever block has the highest priority on that grid. So double the distance again. This time out to 40 blocks. Let's see what happens. I'm doing this all in spectator cam because I don't want to distract the turret with my astronaut. Now we've got four times the distance to the decoy and will it still protect the gyroscope? Yes it will. How interesting. The maximum range of these turrets is 800 meters. That's about 320 blocks. So if we add an extra, hmm, we want, 
Let's take this out to 100 first and see what that works out. And then if that doesn't work, we'll push it even further. So the decoy is now 250 meters further away than the gyroscope. Will it still get targeted first? And here we go. Wow. It is still going after that decoy. It is miles further away. And it is still being targeted. This was something I really wanted to test because on a lot of the stuff I'd read about while preparing for this tutorial, people were saying decoys should be set at the front of your ship because the distance to the enemy makes a difference. Well, so far I'm not convinced. It certainly doesn't seem to make a difference right now. Let's add another 100 blocks. Let's take it out to 500 meters. And there we go, another 100 blocks. And a tiny little decoy on the end. Alright, here we have it. 250 meters. No, 500 meters. We did 200, didn't we? 500 meters difference. Does it target the decoy first? No! Okay. Distance makes a difference. Let's test that one again. We'll place a new copy and see if it still works. Seems the people were right. Distance does have an impact. Fairly extreme distance. But nonetheless. No! Oh! Ooh! Okay. Should we go best of five? That's one for the decoy and one for the gyroscope. Alright, testing round three. Will it be the decoy or will it be the gyroscope? It's the gyroscope again. Okay. So we got two for the gyro and one for the decoy. Round four. And... Decoy! Ooh! Well, isn't this interesting? We've got an even split. This certainly was not happening at the shorter distances. At the shorter distances, the decoy was working consistently as you'd expect. It was getting targeted first every time. But at these extreme distances, it seems a lot more inconsistent. Number five, and we've got decoy again. I don't think this can make up its mind. Let's add another... 100 blocks. So we'd be total of about 310 away. Maybe we have to go a little less than that just to make sure we are within range if I place it a bit wonky. So let's go out to 80 blocks. So this is 280 blocks. Can we get it to consistently target the gyroscope? And 280 blocks. Gyroscope. We have gyroscope. Okay, this is looking reproducible. Seems like the 200 block mark was around the transition zone for this distance test. One last test. If it gets 3 out of 3, I'm going to call it and say that at this distance, even though it's on the same grid, distance matters. Yep, gyroscope again. Okay. So there you have it, distance matters, if it's extreme. It's now time for us to look at how to armor these decoys so that they can last a little bit longer under fire. We're running in slow-mo because with light armor directly against the decoy, it obliterates it ridiculously quickly. It's less than two seconds from the starting of firing till the time that the decoy is destroyed. That's not a lot of extra time in a battle, unless you're very lucky. 
So armor block shape test number two. This time we're going to see if the deformation made it get destroyed faster. If we place this down, and we watch. Oh, that's really inconvenient. <sighs> it's bad timing for it to run out of its ammunition. We have to make sure that these tests are not interrupted by a reload, as that's really going to mess with our numbers. What I'm trying to test with this air gap is whether the deformation of the armor blocks causes damage to the decoy so that it actually gets destroyed faster. And at 2.1 seconds, maybe it does. That's ever so slightly longer than the time it took for the decoy to be destroyed when the armor was directly against it. Test with heavy armor blocks immediately against the decoy. These are already lasting a lot longer than the light armor. A lot longer. We may have to... Oh! And gone. If we zoom in and slow down even further, you can see that the blocks deform. They don't completely destroy the decoy, but they may be doing some damage to it. So then when the gunfire comes through, it requires fewer hits to destroy that decoy. So let's see if that air gap makes a difference. And test number four. Heavy armor with an air gap around the decoy. Come on. You can see it. Come on, little Gatling gun. Oh, there we go. All right. Timer has started. And if the air gap really did make a difference, we should see that here, like we did with the light armor. But as it turns out, no. I suspect the difference in timing is actually more down to the fact that my timing methods might not be perfectly accurate. The way I worked out the start timer was when the Gatling gun first fired, and to the time where I had the first frame that the uh, decoy was actually gone from the screen. Given that the margins are so small, my recommendation would be just do what's going to look best, and for most situations that's probably going to be having the armor immediately against the decoy. That makes it a smaller thing to attach to the outside of your vessel. And welcome to the goofily modified talisman. What we have is a few decoys out on heavy armor pylons. And now let's do some flybys over some Gatling guns. What we've seen from today's tests is that at extreme ranges, distance within a grid does make a difference to where you should put your decoys. It's very unlikely that any of you are going to build ships that are that long, that it will make any meaningful difference. The reason for that is any ship that's actually designed to be more than just a needle is unlikely to fit under the block limit at those sorts of ranges. This is kind of handy because I really didn't want to have to think too much about where I put my decoys other than making sure they were on the outside of the ship and that they don't attract fire through other objects that I want to protect. And let's jump ahead to where I crashed the talisman and we can have a look at exactly that problem. With the left-hand side decoy destroyed, the gun's now trying to target the right-hand side one. But in doing so, it's actually shooting through one of the hydrogen tanks. The hydrogen tank is not being targeted right now. The gun is quite clearly targeting at the decoy, as you'll see that it doesn't even move at all once the hydrogen tank is destroyed. What this means is if you know where the guns are positioned on your enemy target, you'll need to try and put your decoys in front of other objects. Now they don't need to be nearer the other gun, they just need to have a clear path between the decoy and the gun that is only obstructed by armor that you want to have hit. Make sure that you don't have any critical systems between your decoy and the gun that's trying to hit it. But, you know, that's probably obvious to some people, but it's the sort of thing that I would have stuffed up. It's also important that you don't put your decoys right next to something that's valuable, as the Gatling guns and missiles have a degree of inaccuracy, so the spread of their fire may actually damage those structures as well. 
try and keep a bit of separation so that any of that spread doesn't accidentally take out something important as collateral damage. Probably not ideal. Lastly, I have tested whether the decoys need to be powered and they definitely don't. The final tests that we saw here had no power on board and the decoys were still very much targeted. If you've got any other things that you'd like to see tested with decoys, let me know in the comments. I'd like to have another look and make sure that these results actually hold up with small ships as well and whether there's any better ways of armoring small ships as small ship heavy armor still doesn't take many hits. There's plenty more to come, so I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.